Hi, how are you? I'm sitting here at the park and I am been contemplating and well it's a beautiful spring day um, and I would like your input. One, I've had very much a difficulty trying to find a way to discuss a topic that is needed to happen and to find the right words to communicate it without without repercussions or without fear of addressing what I'm trying to express. So I would like to preface one. My goal with this whole live feed right here is to help you both as survivors and healers fully awaken to your full potential while being ethically responsible. And what I want to say is be aware of wolves in sheep's clothing. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm finding a very disturbing trend over the last several years that is quite, in my opinion, alarming. And again, my intention for this live video, please, mis please understand, is that to help awaken, educate you with this trend, open your eyes, and hopefully I can communicate what I'm trying to say effectively. And um, I've actually got some notes to try to help me. So, but I would love your input, your feedback on a very sensitive topic. So for those who might be going through some stuff right now, I just want to say this, you know, trigger warning alert, okay? So first thing I want to say is I want to check in with you to see if you are aware of the following trends and to initiate a conversation and a solution together. That's my goal. So that survivors are protected as well as those who legitimately try to help survivors of abuse uh, heal as well. But here's the challenge. The spiritual and healing community is easily fooled as is the rest of our culture by those who abuse women. How these individuals who gaslight or abuse women are very skillful at what they do. There's a lot of subtle masks that um, they use to block the realities of who they are. And I like to correlate that to the movie with Julia Roberts, Sleeping with the Enemy. Okay? And here's the thing. I think I'm very intuitive. I'm very schooled. I'm very well aware of myself. And yet I probably married, let's just say, I married somebody who not only abused me, but after 13 years of being with this person to find out that they lied about their very existence, that they never graduated college, that they had six slip and falls with lawsuits attached that I had no awareness of, okay? So it's, it's a total mind sweep of identity okay so this is what I've learned over the last 13 years with my eyes that have finally become open I've learned and educated myself I've trained I've advocated for others other victims of abuse and I keep hearing similar stories over and over again that break my heart now that I'm in the healing and spiritual communities I'm seeing a very disturbing trend and I'll get there so what I've been seeing is an increase of men with histories of abusing women although many of us may not initially view what we see as their behaviors as abuse preying on these women over the last few years is what I've been noticed and increasingly infiltrating the spiritually based communities claiming to be healers claiming to be advocates some of them who are also claiming to be healers or sex abuse counselors with a sexual predatory behavior twisting sacred arts into perversion and in my opinion is abuse. So I want to ask you, have you noticed any of this? I mean really, I would like to know. So let's chat because these men pretend to be a hero wanting to fix the problem, the broken you. It's a falsity. 
That's about the subtleties of manipulation, narcissism, coercion, and control. Here are some of the red flags, and this is one I've seen recently. When you try to bully your way into an exclusive group under the falsity of a false intention, with the exploitation of the sacred arts with the intention to overpower. And I want to give an example, somebody with a history of abuse infiltrating exclusively women's groups for malintentions. Overly pushy, no filters, no boundaries, yet always claims to want to help or quote-unquote fix you. Victim blames while taking no responsibility for their own actions. They're also a center of attention seeker. But here's the other one. Women who go into the spiritually based communities to in initiate certain healings for themselves, especially if they experience failures of the legal system or the broken medical system. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of bravery to do this. And in order to heal trauma, it takes the ability to face ourselves and to be vulnerable. Healing from abuse, I will say, is not fun. It is not easy. However, these individuals see this as an opportunity to move in. And many times we may feel so desperate to be rescued from being broken and feeling unloved or worthy due to the exhaustion tend to be prime targets for these types of individuals who prey on us. Does any of this resonate with you? Because here it is, you combine both scenarios and this manifests into a recipe for a breeding ground for more predatory behavior and women feeling not safe enough to continue their healing. They end up becoming more victims. So here it is, time's up. We have to wake up. I'm here to tell you that I would like you to see if you can identify in your own inner circles, including the virtual ones, that may exhibit these types of traits. And secondly, it is also important to find somebody, if you are on the healing path, who is reputable. If somebody crosses your boundaries, if they're overly pushy, that ought to be a sign to walk away. Thirdly, and this might be a tough one for some healers. Those who knowingly are complicit, maybe turn a blind eye, or unknowingly complicit, should take notice. Please, I'm asking you to walk the walk. We need you. The world needs more healers. It is important to step it up and protect your clients and protect your students. Please don't send contradictory messages by also aligning yourself with these types of individuals, which happen to be mostly men, I will say. It sends the wrong message and it only empowers these abusers in sheep's clothing. So I'm asking you to be part, <coughs> excuse me, of this solution. These individuals that I'm talking about lack boundaries or the ability to, to accept rejection and are apathetic to the needs of their partner. They constantly seek attention, validation, emotional attention from these women while gaslighting their partner. They are jealous or insecure. How many of you experienced that one? Hmm? kind of being bullied into thinking that you are a type of person that you're not because what you're seeing are actually red flags and then when you confront the red flags you're being told that you're just jealous or you're just insecure. Although those skillful narcissistic manipulative tactics can be quite convincing at making you or rallying others to believe that they care about you and you are the one that needs help. Hmm, how many of you felt that one too? You know, when you see the red flags and you confront that person that is doing this to you, you're being told you're the one that's sick. You're the one that needs the help. 
Be aware. Don't ignore these red flags, I plead with you. We need to support our survivors and don't discredit or excuse the abusive behavior or even have sympathy for the abuser. This serves us no purpose but giving the abuser exactly what he is seeking. More power, more control, more manipulation. I personally, because I do work with a lot of survivors, have actually stopped associating myself with those in the community who were knowingly complicit to the behaviors of abusers. You should do the same. If you truly want the cycle of abuse to end and you truly care about healing trauma, we need to do this together. We need to do this together as a community. I'm open to conversation. Please ask your questions, comments below, if this topic is really needed. Thanks. Have a great day.